This video is the first video in the, our series of oil heating lectures. What I'm going to do in this video is introduce the possibilities in the HVAC industry and some of the careers and certifications that are available as well. So I have to say today's a great time to begin a career in the HVAC industry. It's a critical part of our society. Remember, everyone likes to be warm. Everyone likes to be cool. Everyone likes to be comfortable. We have to have food to eat. Most of our food stuffs are perishable, so refrigeration is required. There's really no part of life that you can get away without dealing with something that's with the HVAC industry. Over the next decade, the number of HVAC workers is going to increase. A large number of current workers are expected to retire. So there's a lot of opportunities, and that's what I sort of want to go through in this lecture. As you prepare for your path as a career, there's two of the many educational and professional paths that are available in the industry. No two people will follow the same career path, but a career in HVAC can follow many different routes and can be personally and financially rewarding. The keys to success, remain focused. Keep in mind where you wanna go. We have some stuff we have to cover. We have material we have to cover as a part of every class in our HVAC program. That's going to be a little bit mundane occasionally. You're going to have to learn some theory. We're going to have to do some math. You're going to have some work you're going to have to do on your own. But try to remain dedicated to this chosen career. Persevere. And the rest of the success is up to you. So we have a couple case studies that I'm going to walk through. And these are students that we actually have had. We have changed the name to Protect the Innocent, but Robert was an average student in high school. He enjoyed math and science, but really didn't care to apply himself. His parents encouraged him to attend a four-year college in order to prepare for the world of work. He attended the four-year college, but only finished two years because he found the classes to be dry and boring. So he left college. During the next five years, he had several different jobs. About at age 25, he found a job working in the local HVAC warehouse. He worked hard, followed the rules, maintained a positive attitude. Soon he was promoted from working in the warehouse to an office position where he would assist with developing quote. He really enjoyed the job, found it was fulfilling, but he re realized he was drawn to more hands-on work. He returned to school and attended HVAC classes. Even though he had no knowledge of electricity and motors, he caught on quickly and found the subject interesting. On completion of his course, he passed four entry-level standardized HVAC assessments and gained certifications. Within four weeks of graduating, he had his own work truck and within seven months he was performing service work on his own. His employers were impressed with his motivation, dedication, effort, and honesty and he got continued salary increases and other opportunities. Okay, he realized it was important to continue his professional development and training by taking additional certification courses and attending certifications. In Robert's own words, now it is up to me to take the next step and determine where I want to go. Then we have another case study. Alex, he's the youngest of four children. His parents valued education and encouraged him to discover his passion and talents. While in school, Alex struggled with math and science. His high school counselor suggested that he apply to a career trade school. He followed his counselor's advice and found that he liked the HVAC program. He completed the program and discovered that he was good at understanding the complexities of HVAC systems. He decided that engineering would be his career path. Even though his fear of math and science lingered, he was 100% confident with 100% effort that he could succeed. The four-year engineering program was hard, but he per persevered and successfully completed it and received his bachelor's in mechanical engineering. He obtained a professional position with a large HVAC system manufacturer. He quickly rose through the ranks and became a lead engineer. His superiors noticed his enthusiasm and a number of promotions came. Alex was recruited by several competitors and received impressive increases in salary and commissions. 
With this new position, he worked with HVAC manufacturers throughout the world and was able to visit countries such as China, Italy, and Mexico. So those were two success stories. There are many, many more. I could think of a student that I had my first year as an instructor that came out, came into the program really not knowing what he wanted to do. Okay, it was sort of fun for him. He loved hands-on, he loved mechanical stuff. We had issues sometimes as we went through the program. We had issues with attendance and everything else. However, he suddenly decided to start applying himself and right now he's running a $3 million a year company in the Tennessee area. I have another graduate who is working in Connecticut. He has came up through the ranks, landed a position with a very large manufacturer and distributor and service company. He did years as a service tech and now he's in the sales department doing very well on commissions. So a job and a career are two different things. A job is something you do to earn income. Often a job is held for a short period of time. A career is a series of employment opportunities where increased skills are developed with an aim of professional advancement. The goal of a career is to move progressively into positions that require greater, greater knowledge and skills. These advances in knowledge generally provide increased salaries. A career path is a sequence of related employment opportunities. These positions generally require no previous working experience in the field. Entry-level positions may require a certain level of education, training, or skills. For example, an entry-level HVAC technician may be required to have a certificate or associate's degree from a technical college. Career paths progress from entry-level positions requiring experience, knowledge, and skills. For some, simply working in the entry-level position provides the experience and knowledge needed to attain the next employment position. For others, training or certification in addition to experience in the entry-level position may be required to advance. Careers are chosen based on a person's skills, strengths, abilities, and interests. A career allows you to develop your skills and expand on your experiences, positioning yourself for promotions, salary increases, and other opportunities. So this is an example of a career path for a service technician. Okay, an entry level position would either be an apprentice if you're in a state with licensing or a residential service technician, maybe in training or with somebody else for a while. Okay, then a residential service technician will progress and become more and more, um, basically you could go to become a commercial refrigeration technician or you could go to commercial AC technician. Then your career will progress. You could become a master technician, a supervisor, and a manufacturer's technician, an energy auditor. Then you can progress even further from each of those three. You could go into design, estimation, distributor, or even open your own business as a contractor. So there is a progression, but you have to get the skills you need to start someplace. Very few people are gonna hop out of school and become a contractor or an equipment distributor. You're gonna to wanna to have the skill set of the level before you. So career clusters and pathways are important as well. Career clusters are broad categories of employment fields. Most HVAC occupations are located in the architecture and construction career cluster. Students who choose this career tend to be good with their hands and are able to visualize projects. The architectural and construction career cluster is divided into three career pathways, design and pre-construction, construction, maintenance and operations. For HVAC careers, we start off with the HVACR technicians. The work of an HVAC technician falls into two broad categories, installation or service. Installation involves the initial setup of equipment and systems. Installations occur on new construction and in existing construction. Service involves work on existing systems. Service work could include 
schedule maintenance and service calls. Okay, in large companies, installers may specialize in one of the subcategories in this industry, such as gas heat, oil heat, hydronics, residential AC, and commercial refrigeration. Installers put in the heating and air conditioning or refrigeration systems. They run any piping or duct work and install and connect electrical wiring. The installers then test the system for proper operation and make any necessary adjustments. Approximately half the people working in the HVAC field work for an HVAC contractor. The remaining are employed by industrial plants, institution, and government agencies. Approximately 15% are self-employed. Residential air conditioning systems are typically designed by the HVAC contractor. However, many AC and refrigeration systems are designed in larger installations by HVAC engineering firms. And in some cases, the cities and towns require them to be. The following types are some types of system designed by HVAC engineering firms. Commercial air conditioning for offices, warehouses, movie theaters, malls, and hotels. Commercial refrigeration systems for grocery stores, cold storage warehouses. In other words, big systems are often designed by an outside designer. Large public buildings such as libraries, museums, universities, airports, and train stations. Large high-end residential air conditioning systems. The design of the large AC systems must be approved by an HVAC engineer. An HVAC engineer normally has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. HVAC engineers are usually licensed by the state before they're able to approve designs. In other words, they must be permitted to put a stamp of approval on a system. In order to be licensed, the engineer may need to pass a licensing exam and have a few years of trade experience. HVAC engineers analyze the building or refrigerated space to determine the requirements of the system. Much of the engineer's work deals with simulation and analysis and must be familiar with all legal requirements and best practices. HVAC designers are individuals that often prepare designs for smaller or more common air conditioning systems. The HVAC designers are not licensed and do not have the same knowledge as an HVAC engineer. HVAC designers often start out as technicians who make an effort to learn about system design along with service and maintenance. HVAC drafters are individuals who work with engineers and designers in order to prepare construction drawings. The knowledge of CAD software and drafting conventions is critical for an HVAC drafter. Nearly all process start with a bid. This is the position of the estimator. A bid is an estimate of the scope and cost of the project. Accurate cost estimates are vital to the success of an HVAC company. The estimator calculates the cost of the project by considering many different things, including the equipment and materials cost, the time needed to complete the work, the labor cost of that time, costs for permits and inspections. The estimator must also consider how a system will be installed. This has to include the number of hours each tech will work for each task in the project. The estimator will often work with the construction supervisor or project managers to plan each phase of the product. Estimators must have good math skills, computer skills, and pay very close attention to details. Estimators can make or break a service and installation company. An energy auditor is another position that's available. It's another career path. These individuals inspect and test structures and prepare a report. The report summarizes the current energy use of a building and recommends ways to reduce energy usage. Energy auditors must have good understanding of HVAC systems and building construction. In addition to visually inspecting a building, energy auditors perform several tests. They could do a blower door test. This measures the air infiltration into a structure. Reducing infiltration of, a, of outside air is a primary method of reducing energy use. Duct tight, tightness testing. This test determines if conditioned air is leaking out of the ductwork. Thermal imaging. A thermal imaging equipment is useful to identify locations of air infiltration and inadequate insula insulation. Building inspectors is another 
tr part of the trade. It's actually part of the entire construction industry. These individuals review construction work to ensure that construction adheres to the applicable building codes. Work that meets the requirements are approved by the building inspector. Building inspectors normally have a strong background in the building trades and a good knowledge of all relevant building codes and regulations. So when we take a look at the employment outlook, the outlook in the HVAC industry is quite promising and strong. In the HVAC industry, positions cannot be replaced by automation and they cannot be outsourced. Sure, our HVAC systems are coming becoming increasingly complex, we're using more and more computers, but there will never be a way to replace that person that has to go out and either troubleshoot or repair the equipment. Applicants with post-secondary education or an apprenticeship are often preferred if not required. States with licensing require an apprenticeship. The projected job outlook for the next 10 year period and again, we're working with reports from 2012 to 2022. We'll see an increase of 21% in the HVAC field. Okay, and you can find the Bureau of Labor statistics of this online. There are student memberships that are available for professional organizations. I urge people to take advantage of these while they're in school. Some professional organizations offer student memberships at a reduced rate for those who are enrolled in HVAC training. Participation in these organizations may provide information about scholarships, a magazine or newsletter subscription, an opportunity to attend conferences and meetings and access job postings. Student memberships are also great to list on resumes. Associations that may offer student memberships include Air Conditioning Contractors of America, ACA, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, that's ASHRAE, Refrigeration Service Engineer Society, RSES, and that last one has a ton of great training material that's available with a student membership. In the HVAC industry, lifelong learning is crucial. Do not allow yourself to get out of date. Do not allow the incoming guys and gals into the field to know more than you do. You must stay informed and up to date on many topics, including changes to government regulations relating to refrigerants, new refrigeration and air conditioning and gas heat components, new technology and control systems, new tools and equipment that improve productivity and the quality of your work. Certifications are credentials that show an an individual has attained a level of competence regarding a specific topic or set of competencies. There are varying variety of certification available, including engine entry level, professional, and specialty. Several certifying organizations are available. HVAC Excellence offers employment ready certifications for students and professional level certifications for working technicians. Certifications are available in residential AC, light commercial AC, light commercial refrigeration, heat pumps, hydronic heating, gas heat, oil heat, and electric heat. There's also a ton of certifications available for energy management and indoor air quality. NATE is the North American Technical Excellence. It's an exam that's independent professional certification organization. Certification is valid for two years, after which a tech needs to recertify. One to two years experience is recommended before taking this exam. RSES has three classifications of membership. Certific certificate membership, active specialist membership, certified member specialist. Certificate membership is earned on a successful completion of an exam that tests a wide variety of knowledge required in the installation and servicing of refrigeration and AC equipment. The other memberships are earned by successfully completing one or more written exams. Licensing is required in some states for both HVAC contractors and technicians. The processing of obtaining a license may vary but may require any or all of the following, the payment of an application field, experience working in the field, adequate performing on a state licensing exam. Also very important to note that more and more states are requiring criminal background checks in order to receive a license. 
Once the application process is approved, an additional license fee is normally required to obtain the license and is generally valid for one year. So hopefully this gives you a good introduction of what's available in the HVAC field. And again, it's important to remember that there are many different career paths. Let me just real quick go back to the slide that shows where you can go. Okay, you're coming in as an entry level person that's hopefully going to get either into a residential HVAC service technician or residential installer. Refrigeration is a wonderful field, lots of work available, it's never going to go away. So keep your options open as you go through training. And just again, focus on where you want to go with your career, find something you enjoy and persevere. And always ask questions if you don't if you do not feel you understand the information.